Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by Hymns. Listen, 66% of men lose their hair by the age of 35. Thing is, when you start to notice the hair loss, it's too late. So it's easier to keep the hairdo you got than to replace the hair you've lost. Now listen, Hymns connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions that treat hair loss. For Hymns, Dot com, a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men, all right? Now, do me a favor. Today, if you order now today, the church family gets a trial month of hymns for just $5 while supplies last. See the website for full detail. This would cost hundreds of dollars if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. Go to hymns.com slash Joey. That's for hymns, F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash Joey. All right, go there and take care of your little hair loss or whatever other problems you may have, all right? And this is the real deal, hymns. Number two, listen, you heard me talk about MeUndies, and you know I'm a big believer in the product. I think they're the best. They're comfortable. They keep you dry. They keep your nutsack in tip-top magoo (laughs) order. I'm 55, so nothing could do that. But anyway, listen to me. MeUndies, you got 100% money-back guarantee, 100% satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies guarantee you'll love their undies. Or... Your money back, all right? Now, MeUndies has a great offer for the church family. For the first-time purchases, when you purchase MeUndies, you'll get 20% off and free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get 20% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% money back satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash Joey. Kick that fucking muley. Oh, fuck yeah. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Welcome to the Church of What's Happening Now. The Christ killer in full effect. But my brother's here tonight to talk to you people about some shit. My main man. Whatever his fucking George Perez. George Perez. (laughs) Ah, What's up, my boy? You know. Uh, Fuck. Put the pieces together. I got a busy week fucking later on. You've been busy, dog. Nah, you know what, bro? I do it nice and slow. And nobody gets their feelings hurt. I get to spend time with the family. Yeah. I get to put my efforts into the podcast. I take the take, take care of myself. And I Smart. Get on the road. But we were talking about something really interesting when we. Uh, I know. I forgot podcast. too. I was, was talking about Roseanne Barr. Oh yeah, Roseanne. Like, I don't know. I don't know why she's getting shit now. I don't. I don't keep up on poor Roseanne now. Whatever the fuck the deal is. Her ratings are up there though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Supposedly. She's killing it. The biggest. I think it was ABC's biggest premiere in a decade or something like that. It was huge. It was like 18 million people or something like that. You know, it's fucking weird that we were talking about when she shot her special at the store and uh-huh. Betsy Shaw told Eric Blake and, <laughs> and Noe no, Gonzalez not to talk to her. Yeah. And they talked to her and she told him to fuck off. <laughs> you know, it's you have no idea, Lee, what Roseanne Barr was doing at that time. I, when what I was year looking, was this? This has to be 97. When I got here in 97, Roseanne Barr was tearing these motherfuckers up. And if it wasn't Roseanne Barr, it was the other chick from the South. Remember, they cut her show with ninety episodes. I'm, I'm. You remember? It's the chick in my I'm head. Talking about yes. the comedian chick. She never recovered from that. She still does gigs. A couple of years ago, I thought she was going to go on the road with Eliza Schlesinger and some other chicks, but something happened. She's too far gone. Yeah. They gave her a show, and she fucking left the planet too, bro. That that, that other side of the world, when you sell your soul like that, it gets dark. I can and imagine. You start acting weird. But Roseanne, like I saw a great interview years ago on Larry King. You know, you know when you get home from the comedy gigs, you're in your uh-huh. hotel room and whatever's on is on, and you, and sometimes it's something interesting. And it was Roseanne, and I was sitting there going over the nights, like your your jokes from the night where you fucked up, what joke didn't work, like uh-huh. that shit. I had a bag of nachos, you know, you got a soda out, you're just relaxing, you're just unwinding. But she did a great interview where she spoke about. They asked her about the Cosby's. Oh, they said. Well, specifically, they asked her why she threw out the brass from ABC from a Christmas party. Well, who's the brass? Like, all the top people from ABC, Roseanne wouldn't let them into her Christmas party. No man. way. Shh, fuck. Like, she-, she was that powerful. Like, when she knocked Cosby down from Thursday night, that that put Roseanne to a different Yeah, it was another level. She got fucking crazy and that, but she was firing writers. When I got here, they were firing writers. There was always something going on there. Well, well the show was done by that time but the attitude was huge and over the years she humbled i mean she's worth millions of fucking yeah. dollars you know what but I'm like but at the store joey was like does she come in strong or does she get strong there 
she came into the store throwing heat. Oh. I mean, she was a character inside a character. The story goes that she was in the original room, Mitzi saw, made her do a set in the main room, and the people from The Tonight Show were there. And oh, they wow. told her, you're on tomorrow or the day after. Oh, wow. Like, that's how fast it moved for her. And in those days, The Tonight Show was the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. You did The Tonight Show, you did well, you got work the next day. It was that fucking easy. Whether it's one time or ten, you were still on JRE, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's a million downloads. A million people know about you. What you do with that million downloads is up to you now. Yes. Do you attack those million people? Do you lay back and just, well, people going to come see me? People going to pay attention to me? So there wasn't that. Roseanne had those. I mean, Roseanne was fucking huge, bro. But back to Larry King. She told Larry King that ABC came to her and they said, our dream is for you to knock off Cosby. So she fired all her writers and everybody and started from scratch, Jack. And she got two writers and she mixed them with two stand-up comedians. Oh. Right, which is brilliant mix. And she let them battle it out in the room. And she executive produced. You know, she made the her husband, Tom Arnold. She yeah. put him on the show. Oh, oh yeah. Remember? She kicked Goodman she, off, huh? He, no, no. She had Goodman still on, but something. Something. I don't know. That was her brother. I don't fucking know what happened. Tom Arnold was smooth by doing smooth, that shit. Smooth, smooth. Tom Arnold played it like a fiddle <laughs> and walked out of there with $15 million. He Kardashian million. that bitch. Yeah, he Kardashian. It's fucking amazing. What he, he did. did. But Roseanne was huge, but the attitude was even bigger. Like, the attitude was big, bro. Like, fucking walking off stages and shit. <laughs> but she had so much dough, it didn't matter. And she had power, right? And she had power. But what? Uh, how many women shows do you think have been out before Roseanne came out with that heat? I don't know. I just remember I Love Lucy growing up. Yeah, yeah, you can't I, fuck I remember with that. I Love Lucy, and I remember Mary Tyler Moore show. I don't know about how big she came out, but I just know that I started in Denver, and she came out of Denver. So as I was starting comedy, Roseanne was fucking Killing. taking off. So Denver became a hotbed for stand-up. Everybody moved to Denver now. Oh, Denver had the recipe. Comedians think that way. I started in Denver. That's where I lived. I lived in Boulder, so I had to start in Denver. When I when I went down there, once I got into the scene, little by little, you heard rumblings. The older comics were all pissed off. She stole my joke. Yeah, I wrote for her. Yeah, everybody wrote for her. All of a sudden, all the ones that didn't make it. Yeah, everybody was pissed off at her. So half the camp in Denver loved her. But the other half of camp didn't fucking like her because she either stole their jokes or he wrote for her and she didn't pay him. It was always, and all that shit's just bullshit. How, you know it, how it, it trickles with everybody. Dog, let me tell you something. <clears throat> As a comic, if Lee gave me five jokes a month that I could run with, why would I get rid of them and stiff them? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I That's know exactly run, what you're that's saying. That's why Ron White hires five comics to write for him. So does Kevin Hart. Yeah. Like there, there's people on laptops. I've seen his show. There's people on laptops. Hey, homie, stop, stop. <laughs> Do that again, dog. Yeah. That's some that's shit. How you make a living. Yeah. A good comic knows he gets three other comics that he, like I have. HBO gives me 300000 I'm pulling like Chris Rock. Oh, yeah. I'm taking three comics that I like and go, here's 50000 a piece. Until I shoot the special, you're with me every night. We're hanging out every night. Pick me up at 745 every yeah. night. We'll get an Uber to drive us around. Wow. The improv, the ha-ha, and you're writing, mm -hmm. Lee's writing, and somebody else is writing. Each get 50 grand. Damn, I'm down. So, so the first, <laughs> so that's Chris Rock style. I yeah. didn't invent that. Chris Rock did that. Chris oh, yeah? Rock did that with Nick DiPaolo, Louis C.K., and Richard Jenny. Oh, wow. Think of that. That's why if you watch Chris Rock's early specials, they yeah. were, wow. Fire. He gave everybody 50 or 75 and said, 15, 15, 15, 15. Takes the pressure off me. Yeah. Plus, motherfuckers, do what you do. Do what you do. Web it how you want to web it. And they'd be outside the store talking. No, put it here. That, put it. Bro, they'd be right there. And they'd start at the improv, mm -hmm. do 20. Laugh Factory, guest spot, bumping motherfuckers, do 20. <laughs> and sometimes one of them would go up. Chris Rock would go up. And Richard Jenny would go up after him and do this joke. Let me work it this way. That's how badass they were. Wow. So I'm walking in there with George Perez and Lee, and not only are we walking in, we're all going up. And you're going to try the material you wrote for me, and you're going to try the joke you wrote for me. 
and then go, ooh, when I was on stage, I fucked it up, man. Yeah. Do it this way and add Joey to it. Now put fuck there. Boom. We got a joke. Your 75000 your 50000 is worth weight and gold. Now, the comic to have his ego lowered by doing that. Yeah. See, you're not so lowering my ego. To me, you're fucking telling me, Joey, I'm putting my life in your hands. Yeah. I'm going to take care. I'm going to go, what weeks you need me? Get off the road. And I'll be right there with you. Every There's a way to do this. It's six, seven nights a week, three spots during yeah. the week. And on the weekend, came it down, spent some time with your family. It's 15 to 16 spots a week because half of them are going to bomb on purpose just to talk. <laughs> yeah. You just want to talk and get a line. And yeah. One of these guys got a tape recorder. Boom, we got that line, dog. All right. Yeah. Now, you email it to Lee. Email, he emails it to fucking Giant La Bamba. And by the <laughs> morning, we got three fucking jokes from that. That's real to try shit. out. That's and, how you do it. Yeah, and plus the camp stays fed. Like motherfuckers are happy because they're like, getting happy. paid. Now nobody says, "Well, he wrote my joke. I wrote a joke." No, <laughs> nobody says that. You got no. fifty grand, bro. Fuck that motherfucker. I'll babysit him for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Before, like as a fan, when we talked about this before, I, I, I was really not against it because I like, but it's it, I, if I always imagined if I was a stand up, I would never let any like I wouldn't want people to write for me. Like see, I liked people who wrote for themselves but like you said something like you've been giving me advice here and there like one thing you said is just your material is like how your world collides with that or the with rest of the world. and like so I, I i don't i don't even see it really as writing it's like because it's we were talking about specials and how like when people do a few specials they kind of run out of material almost like cause you're, just, you're just writing for so long so if some if someone else is just like kind of like lobbing it up for you and then you like like Joey, if you were hiring us, if we gave you an idea, you'd probably change it a little bit. You'd adapt it to your point of view, but it's well, just no, no. But see, the people that you're hiring, you get open mics with, right? They know you for the last fifteen years. Okay, they know how to write to you. They know how to write for you. It's not just anybody. But it's, it, I'm, these I look, guys yeah, are your friends. It's you helpful. started with them. You you featured you, for me. Yeah. Remember that time, bro? We did that club for sixteen dollars and eighty two. <laughs> yeah. That's what remember, it is. Remember when we did Cohibas? I've, I've had thousands of people that I've known over the years. I go, bro, I wrote her something. It's not working, but I see your name on it. Oh. It's different. It's different. Yeah. You know? Some people do it from the heart. Some people do it on the way before they hang up. They go, bro, if you got any work, throw it my way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. They hit you with a bad joke and shit. And you're like, so you call me with a bad joke. Now you want work? <laughs> Fuck. Your resume was weak. You know what I'm saying? But it's the truth. It really is the truth that. But was think. Roseanne doing that? Roseanne had in Denver. I don't fucking know. I don't. Yeah. I, I didn't check the facts. All I know is when I got, got on stage in Denver, everything, everything, every time you went to a room with six comics, they talked about two comics, Roseanne Barr and Sinbad. Why? What was Sinbad? Sinbad supposedly lived in Denver, and he did better. He did a benefit one time. And a bunch of the open micers went to the benefit, you know, like to be open micers. Uh -huh. And Sinbad said to these open micers, they said, Sinbad, give us some advice. And Sinbad was like, listen, what I need you guys to do is to write clean comedy. Stay away from dirty comedy because you want to be universal and all this shit like this. So all those dudes became anti-dirty. So just like Rogan in Boston, when I started in Denver, everybody was, bro, you're too dirty. Like, your shit's too dirty. Like, yeah. it's too dirty. Like, that three, you said three fucks. <laughs> too dirty. <laughs> we can't. Because everybody was trying to be fucking Sinbad. Yeah. It's so weird how the heroes from the area uh, define you. You know what I'm saying? You have to figure out what they did, what was different. Like, when you read the Sam Kennison book, it's a great read. Because it tells about Sam and Houston with Carl LeBeau and Bill Hicks. Which is irreplaceable. That's what comedy is all about. Mm -hmm. You getting to the top with your friends. You know, when your friends are there, and you could go back and go, bro, remember Casa Latina on Tuesday night? Hell 40 yeah. bucks. Come on. And people go, the buffet. $40. What are you talking about? Because everybody thinks we just met and we've been doing comedy for three years. Yeah. They don't understand that. I know you since 0 fucking 2 or something, 98, 99, yeah. whatever. You know me was. since 02. 02. 03. 03. And we've met each other. We gained mutual respect for each other because we saw each other at all the fucking hellholes around L.A. where guys wouldn't step foot into those fucking things. No. Most people wouldn't step foot into those things. Me, in hindsight, even back then, I knew they would make me better. 
and they were a pain in the ass to do. They were a pain in the fucking ass to do because there's always a Laker game on or a yeah. Dodger game on. <laughs> and now you, 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 you know, you're doing four spots. So if one of your spots is late, that's fucking your shit up. Yeah. So once one of your spots is late, then we go for the money. Where's the money at? That's who gets my attention. You got that free one in Melrose? See you later, bye. Because I'm not going to make it. Good night. Yeah, but you're headlining. Come on. My father's here. He came from Maine. I don't give a fuck. Get somebody else at the improv. I, I'm going to pick up an envelope. Yeah, dog. I used to give you 100 bucks at El Patio. Yeah, El That Patio. was big shit, too. Big, big shit. People don't, like, one of the things that really frazzled me before I moved to L.A., and this is for anybody who's moving in general for whatever occupation, Whenever I would speak to people, like if you're a, a dancer or you're a fucking archaeologist or whatever, people would always shy you away. Like whenever I would mention L.A. when I was a feature on Triple Runs or in shitty comedy rooms, uh -huh. the headliner was usually a failed L.A. comic. Yes. Who either told you that you had to suck dick to be in L.A., you had to be gay to get in L.A., or you're not going to get spots and you're not going to make any money. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing, Lee. How many people told me I was I not going to make saying. money? And it was the opposite. Yeah. I so know what you're saying right you now. You just have to make money. You have to know eight people who have a room. And they'll throw you 50 bucks here. Yeah. And then you put something together and you put them on the lineup. And next thing you know, you're part of a network. Yeah. And you're part of people calling you going, dog, what are you doing Tuesday night? I got a $50 gig for you at Bar La Che Che. And then somebody else calls you and says, I got a $50 gig. What do I do? Hold on. Let me call you back. What time are you putting me up at Bar La Che Che? Put you up at 915. What time is your show? I'll put you up by 1030. They're both lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> they're both lying to you he's gonna put you up at fucking he's telling you 9 15 because he's putting you up at a quarter to 10 or 10 Ooh, and he wants yeah, you there early because joey's known to come late yeah and <laughs> fucking uh and the other dude and the other dude is really gonna put you up at 11 15 but you already got a 12 at the store and you ain't canceling that for nobody no whether it's 15 unless i needed that package badly <laughs> Then I can I push the store back a little bit. Listen, I'll be there a little late. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now I remember like when I first started comedy, Edwin San Juan had a lot of rooms and Felipe. And I was in a meeting with them because we were just like smoking weed. I think we we went to Felipe's house when he used to live on Temple and Boylston by that high school and shit where he lived. Like it was up a hill. And Felipe's like, hey fool, check it out. Joey needs to pay rent this month, dog. <laughs> So, George, you got him on Wednesday, Casa Latina Tuesday. I got him at Wild Coyote. Hey, the big homie, we got to have him out with rent yeah, this bro. month. And it was just like you said it. Just like you said. It was crazy. Yeah. It was fucking crazy how I'll never forget when I realized I was making money when I didn't have it no more. Oh, yeah. Because from 2000, I got to say it. From 2001, if I'm lying to you, I'm dying right here in front of you guys. From 2001 to 2006, I was making 400 a week as a comic during the week here. Damn. But that's and actually not bad. You got to remember that then you guys started booking improvs, and that upped the ante for everybody. Yeah. Like, once the instant pop started giving us Tuesdays and Wednesdays and some Thursdays, that changed the game. Yeah. That automatically put money in your pocket now constantly. Now, again, you're like, Joey, 300, 400, 300, 400 to do a, a two spots a night. What you do in the store? Ain't that bad when you first get here. No. That's 1600 a month, Jack. I did a lot with 1600 a month in those days. You make that shit work, Jack. Wonder Bread, Ramens, you make that shit work, Jack. The Chinese lunch special, five ninety five with a free soda. <laughs> humming, humming. No, you make it work. But I never forget in two thousand seven, the economy fucking went out the window. I got clean. That's off. when I got locked up. Yeah, I got clean off coke, and all those rooms went down the hill. Yeah, and I was sitting there with my dick in my hand, going, "Bro, why am I so broke?" It was because I was making three to four hundred a week. Tuesday, no, Monday through fucking Thursday or Friday, doing little gigs for these guys. Even Satina paid you the small 40. Yeah. Even Satina paid on you the small. On a sold out on a, show. On a sold out show, give you the small 40. You were picking up envelopes all night long. At the end of the night, you were looking at 160 in your pocket. You're not getting rich. But that's it's four or five spots, right? That's four spots. Yeah. You got to figure with the comedy store, 15. 
60 from George, 100 from mm-hmm. Felipe, you know. It's 175, but guess what? Thursday night, you're only making 65. You got a spot at the store and you got a $50 gig up at Universal. And you got to figure out how to pay for how to, <laughs> you better hope he pays for your parking because yeah. it's not, it's a small 35. Yeah. Because you got to pay 15 for parking over at hey, Universal. The small 35. <laughs> yeah, the small 35. Hey, Lee, one time I was at this club called Wild Coyote and it's fucking gangster, Lee. It's gangster club. Like the women in there are packing. Jesus. And Felipe's hosting, and he's like, yeah, Joey Diaz is closing the show out tonight. Joey shows up. The show goes till 12. Joey shows up at 10.30. I'm headlining at 10.30, dog. <laughs> yeah, because in those days, dog, I had the injection. Had, yeah. I was hooked on coke. I need this money. I got to get out of here. I ain't got time to wait till 12. I've been waiting all day to do a fucking line of coke. I'm headlining uh, at 10.30. Oh, yeah. yeah. I get that. Go up first and shit. <laughs> Welcome. Bring up your headliner. <laughs> and then Felipe goes, damn, after tonight, a lot of comments are going to say that Joey opened up for them, me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, man? Th- th- those are some great fucking times, Joey, because like, hey, dog, I'm not here to like to kiss your ass or shit, but I seen your whole involvement. We all did. I yeah. saw your involvement. Yeah, too. no, this but is, watching is, yours was crazy because, like, you were already power, but like, I could see like there was just something wasn't letting you get in, dog. Like, you were at the strip club in the VIP in the VIP room, but like, dick wasn't getting hard for some fucking reason, and then it was just it was over. It was over. Like, I remember getting out of prison, and you were just like. Damn, George, I was going to fucking start selling cars. Because when I got out of prison, I was like, I need money. I opened up all these rooms again. And you told me me and Rizzo started to take you in. I just I just seen this evolve. And I was like, oh, shit. It was fucking weird. But I, I know what you mean. I, I see my involvement a little bit, too. Dog. I see it. No, I saw it the last time you were on stage with Red Man or something. I'm like, look at fucking George, man. Trying. And this is years. This is you know, spots every night. And so, as repetitive as the, as the sounds. I don't think, like Lee knows. Lee's heard all. You the think Lee could have done Casa Latina? Not the first two times, but after we got him drunk and he yeah. hooked up with a Mexican chick, <laughs> bro. If the show opens at eight, he'd be there at eight oh three. Hi. Huh, if you Alma was there, you have a spot for me tonight. <laughs> Lee would be there because it was a fucking open bar in the yeah. back, like food. Oh shit! Rice and beans, it was actually good, not bad. Yeah. And if you got there early, they would eat chips, salsa. <laughs> Plus, there was tons of chubby Mexican chicks. Lee loves them. Is that, is that, spot, dirt, is that and, spot still going on? And, no? yeah. and dirty whores. Yeah. Dirty it, whores, dog, with kids and husbands at home. And they'll suck your dick in the parking lot. You think I'm up. fucking crazy. And dog. waitresses that were down. Down. Fuck. This is crazy. Lee, the stories. I could tell you. What about the room? Who booked all? Who the fuck booked that room that we went on a Wednesday and the following Wednesday somebody got shot? That's my room. No. The Martin Moreno. Oh, Oceans. yeah. The one off of Telegraph. Oceans. 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 I remember that shit. When they shot the dude. The yeah. next week I go Why'd back. Why'd they shoot him? Lee, it doesn't matter. The next day, <laughs> the next day I go back. To the- <laughs> it matters a little bit. It matters <laughs> to him. Oh, shit. The next day. It sounds like the DA the, over here. But the funny thing was, the next day I went back. The next day I went back. The DA or something? And they had flowers and candles right in front of the oh. bar fan. Can you imagine doing comedy <laughs> in a place where a guy just got shot the day before? This is what we put up with that you don't see. Straight up. Like, this is, you don't know what it's like to walk past a Mexican candle <laughs> fucking factory with flowers and toys, little G.I. Joe's. That's they got the one full of that heckled brain. last week, eh? And you walk in this bar, Oceans, and it was a little stage with like yeah. fucking uh, sparkle it behind did. you. Remember how yeah. the, the sparkles behind you? It was you? A, like a 70s, 80s vibe in that beer. And it had a thing that said Oceans, like you were supposed to be on a boat. It looked like the bar <laughs> that like Pacino had. Floor. Yeah. It looked like the bar Pacino had in Carlito's way. <laughs> That's what it looked like, guys. I swear to God, they were trying to make this bar oh, shit. look like a fucking inside of a boat. It was hilarious. But the night I walked in there and I saw the flowers on the side, I'm like, bro. My comedy career better do something because I'm doing comedy in a place where a guy got shot. And years earlier, people don't remember when Darren Carter they threw a knife at him in Oceanside. Oh, no way. Like some dude, one of those knife throwers was in the room. And he was <laughs> <laughs> like, like a magician, my I thorn? like my girls. I like my knife. He took that flashlight out and also <laughs> just like, whoosh, and right, ah! right into the wall in Oceanside. <laughs> He'll tell you next time you see him. Tell him. I was with him Friday. Tell him. Tell you about Oceanside. This had to be 2001, 2000. Oh, I wasn't even in yet. 
Yeah, and Darren was very sweet then. Yeah. Like, Darren was drinking tea and shit. Oh, yeah. And some poor motherfucker <laughs> threw a knife for Adam Dog. He was pale for four days. Me but. too. I'm pale for him. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, but he's ginger. Remind though. me not to go to Oceanside. Now, Oceanside's nice now. That shit. Ch- I mean, I don't know. I haven't been there in a while. But, Joey, you know, I- I've always wanted to ask you this, man. Uh, you're like a god in the old Latin world scene. And I remember, like, I hit you up. I go, hey, dog, I'm going to go do a show in Visalia. You're like, dog, how much are they paying you? I'm like, 500. You're like, that used to be a $1,500 check for us, dog. Like, how, like, back in, like, in the 90s, Latin comedy came out, Que Locos, right? We are talking about this. Yes. Like, dog, how was it? Because, like, when I got there, I heard everybody fuck. Like, I had to go out of my way to fuck. Like, like h- how how was it? What do you mean? Like, I heard the rooms were just jumping back then. They had a taco truck outside, margaritas. Like, you guys were doing thousand seaters. When I first came here, the Latin comedy movement was in full effect. In fact, I snuck in through the Latin comedy movement because all three clubs had a Latino night at that time. Oh. All right. The store had a Latino night? Sunday nights from 8 to 10 or something, Monday nights, and the improvs was big. Okay. The improvs was well produced. The dude who did it was a manager. Oh. He had a couple comedians, like not big time comics, like people on TV. Okay. Like he had TV I, I, actors. What the fuck am I saying? Comedians. <laughs> he had actors, but he was a Cuban dude. And he was a very sweet dude. He was married to a black chick that had like one of those diseases. And she was a fucking soul of God. That's awesome. And I came to this town and I fucking did his thing. And I think. He, he was Cuban, so that's why he was like, come back next week. But he goes, don't come to my stage without a suit on. What? Yeah, dog. He was like, I need for you to put a suit on. That's some whack shit. Take and I thought head. about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it like that, and I was going to cancel. I go, who the fuck am I to cancel a spot at the improv? I went to Melrose, and I bought a secondhand black suit. <laughs> <laughs> that's how broke I was. I just bought a suit. Fuck it. You got to do it. You, you got to do it. And I committed to that suit. I bought the suit, and a week later, I got a call. And I'm opening up, I'm doing a show at the Desert Inn. This is when the Desert Inn was open. Where's where's the Desert Inn? Vegas, exactly. It's gone. They sold uh. that shit. <laughs> but the Desert Inn was one of the old school casinos that the Mafia ran, but they were doing comedy now. Mm-hmm. And it was me, David Tell, oh. and like Louis C.K. See, dog? 1500 bucks, Dog, that was the biggest gig of my life. Fuck. You ready for this? I get there, everybody canceled. So guess who replaced them? Vinny oh. Favorito and Tim Allen. Oh. When Tim Allen was <laughs> Tim Allen. Damn. I think of fucking sitting in a room right now for nothing in Vegas and Kevin Hart walks and he goes, dog, I'm doing a gig with you. But they don't even know it. Damn. The people in the audience didn't even know Tim Allen was there. So I went out first. I brought Vinny up and Vinny brought out Tim Allen. The place nearly erupted. Fuck. And that's how I became friends with Tim Allen. He was telling me that he's doing this. He doesn't want nobody to know his business. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want people to come to watch him. That's what, that's so fucking smooth. He kept, he, kept, he kept going, I suck right now. But I just want to do stand-up, but nobody gets that. Everybody I call says we have wow, to put your name. Wow, I understand name. it now. He goes, they have to put your name on the gazebo. So he was doing spots over at the Laugh Factory in the 98, 97. But he would pop in. He didn't want them to know when he was coming up because they would advertise him. Yeah. He and got they, busted for cocaine, huh? Yeah, before he's, before. he's from Detroit, I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. That's crazy. Sorry, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. no, 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 no. Yeah, I just trip out because, like, if you if you look at the comics, like, hey, dog, I'm finally not judging people. Like, I used to judge people. Like, if we're locked up on the street, I was like, you know, fuck this fool, dog. I don't like the way this fool eats. <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to judge people like that, and I stopped judging people like that. And in my head, I was going, Joey D has been locked up. Tim Allen been locked up. Yorsi's been locked up. Toby Hicks been locked up. How many comedians have been locked up? There's not that many of us, dog. I'll, well, I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay, so I got into comedy in 91. For like a year, I just did comedy. And then something sparked me renting videos. That was the shit. I went up. To this video store had three floors in Boulder. They were the biggest video in the f- store in the fucking state of Colorado or something. And the upstairs was just comedy. There was a wall of just stand-up comedy. Everybody was wow. on that wall. And one of the tapes I brought home one night was Tim Allen. 
on the Showtime All Stars. And dog, I fucking laugh my ass off. <laughs> that two days before he goes to the dentist, he don't brush his teeth. I haven't he heard fucking, that bit. He eats Oreos. Sure, it's nineteen eighty fucking seven. Damn. You know, and, but before he goes to the dentist, he would eat Oreos and pack sour cream in there, so the <laughs> color would stick. So when he'd open his mouth, the bird would fly out of there. <laughs> Just some stupid shit, bro. I thought it was amusing, and I, and I'll never forget that I did some reading up on him, and I can't lie to anybody. My heart melted when I found out Tim Allen had done time and he was a rat. He, he'll tell you. He no way. He ratted? He ratted. Fuck. He'll, he'll tell you, he'll tell you I can't kick it with him. That's fuck. No, he'll <laughs> tell you himself that it was a mistake, but he didn't want to do time. He, re he, he had already started doing stand-up or something. But when I read that he uh, did time and got a deal from Disney... It made me a relief. Like, it gave me a breathing room. I can't lie. Yeah, but they won't give it to us. I mean, who knows? Yeah, you're who right. Knows? But now I know it's okay. Listen, before any network gives us anything, they're going to do a background check, George. Yeah. Before they invest in you, they're going to do a background check. And what are they going to find on that background check, George? They're going to find a lot of shit for me. They're going to find too. a lot of shit for you. But as long as you don't stick your fingers in the kid's asshole, <laughs> you don't sell drugs to the kid, or you don't beat your wife, you're they good. can't judge on that. Yeah, and I'm cool. And I got I'm, none of that I'm shit. I'm cool. I'm cool with that shit. So what uh, What do you have to fear? You made a mistake in 1987. You paid for it, and you went on with your life. That's what the story is if they look at my background check. Yeah, I had a couple. Call fraud. me you kidnapped the bitch. <laughs> yeah, but that's 87, <laughs> and he's showing up next this weekend in Tempe. Oh, yeah? Kent Bell is coming to the Tempe Damn. Improv on Friday you're, night. <laughs> you're getting your tweet cleared, <laughs> right? That's that's what's up, though, Listen, dog. bro. If you judge him, this is this is why I don't like this latest shit that somebody molested me in '89. Someone molested you? No, I'm saying oh. that this latest shit. Listen, if George molested me last night, let's call the police right now. And let's make <laughs> sure that everything's all right. But for you to come out and say right now that you I fucked the chick in the comedy store in 2001 one night, some chick just come out of the blue. You get a call from the motherfucking police going, they're coming over to your house, George Perez. Hey, dog. It, it, and they knock on the door and they sit you down. And they go, listen. Some fucking lady just came to the station for the last three days and said that in 2002, you were at El Tortillas for Felipe Spars and Joey Diaz, and you took her in the back and you forced her to have anal sex. And right now, what what's stopping? What's stopping anybody from doing this? Yeah, that's some so, fucked up shit. So when you look at if you look if you do a background check on me, you're gonna find uh, kidnapping that have been pleaded down. I pled down. They wouldn't have fucking pled down. They wouldn't have pled down to a nonviolent. Okay, if, okay. All right. They, My bad. I thought it yeah. was like. No, it was heavy. You grabbed them. <laughs> no, it was heavy duty. But yeah. at the end of the day, none of the stories collaborated. I feel the you. The, the, the the they wanted a conviction. They're like, hey, dog, <clears throat> the take reason, the lower. Yeah, the reason why I kept in contact with the victim, why I made a reach, because at the end of the day, it wasn't the victim who ratted me out. Oh. It was the biker. Oh, I feel you now. I found that out a year later, but I knew that all along that Vela didn't talk first. Uh, you know, they went to Vela at the hospital later and said, what happened? And he was like, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And then days later, they went to him. And now they see with him, what happened with him was he was out on bail. I'm in shock. Listen to me. He, he was out on bail. This dude I kidnapped was out on bail. <laughs> for having a DUI going through a, a wall with a car. And when they took him to the hospital to get stitched up, while he was at the hospital, he kicked in the pharmacy and he robbed liquor cocaine. Fuck. So they pressured him with that. I got you now. You follow me? They said to him, well, if yeah. you don't testify against him, yeah. you're done. We got yeah. you on this. In my but Bella head... held on. At the end, he had to go to court yeah. and say what he did. But he just went to court and kept it light. He didn't really say nothing. And then I bumped into him. So this is, I went. I did my time in 88. I bumped into him in 93 at a bar in Boulder. Colorado? Yeah, at a bar. And I go, what's up? Dog? You didn't what? do this in Jersey. You did this one in Colorado? What, my time? Yeah. No, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, my, my bad, yeah. I'm, so, go ahead, dog. So I'm at the bar, and I bump into him. And I go, how you doing? I go, can you give me a package? And while he's weighing this shit in the hallway, he's looking at me going, I can't believe you kidnapped me, bro. <laughs> that is fucked up. That you kidnapped And he was all fucked up. Uh, and that was a fucked up afternoon. I can't trust. He's like, I can't trust you anymore. And all this shit. And he weighed it out and gave it to me. And that was it, right? So I thought we were cool. 
So when all this social media popped up, I thought about him and I reached out to him. And bro, for like two or three years, he wouldn't go back. And then finally one day his arm would crack. And he's like, fuck you, you fat motherfucker. <laughs> you kidnapped me. You ruined my day and all this shit. Yeah, you know? that's some crazy. And I hit him back. I kept hitting him. And finally he would loosen up a little bit. Finally I go, this is my number. And he called finally. So I got it off my chest. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. If he goes to Tempe, I'm gonna bring him on stage to tell That's the story. Dope. Hell Fuck yeah! It. Tell the story. Come tell on, these people what happened. You're, Hell you. yeah! Straight tell up. Tell them how I set you up. Hell tell yeah! Tell them how I set you up. See, that, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, "Well, people don't understand. Imagine kidnapping somebody." And he's like, "Yo, man, I, I'm cool. <laughs> he didn't hurt me. Eh? Like I was, you know, I was in the trunk. Like he, you kidnapped this fool." And he was on bail. Imagine being on bail. You're like, I'm free. And like some dude just grabs you and throws you in the fucking truck. <laughs> Dog, <laughs> he was going through hell. Like he was going through hell. I got, I got everything I deserved and then some. Because I just took advantage of this poor fucking guy. Like he was going through hell. And when he came to me, he goes, you know, my roommate. Because his whole plot was he was robbing his roommate. Yeah. So the dude who let him stay on his couch when he got out of jail and bailed him out, that's who he was robbing. I'm like, this guy's just crazy. Fuck, this guy's crazy. Yeah, I, so I'm like, if I'm gonna, if you're gonna rob him, then I'm gonna rob you. Why am I gonna give you the cash if you're gonna rob him? That's how I looked at it. Yeah, in my mind. yeah, it's bullying too as well. It's like, yo, dog, you're on my block. No, he wasn't getting bullied. He was, he's a big guy. He was. Okay. This was you had to pull out a pistol in these days. These guys grew up around <laughs> yeah. pistols and shit. You got to pull out a pistol. It's fucking crazy, bro. When I think about all that craziness. Yeah, I feel you. It's like you a on different that. life. It's like I died and came back. Yeah, that and that was like a different fucking life ago. Thirty years ago, all that yeah. craziness. Yeah, you know, this last time I was locked up, I talked to recent enemies because when you're in there, your enemies are now your homies. There's no more set trip, and it's like, and there was this dude that I jumped. Like I didn't jump him. This fool walked up to my cousin and was like, "I'm gonna fucking kill you, bitch." And he didn't know she, she had five dudes outside, so we went in there, Joey. We were, it was at 7 Eleven. It was an orange off of Maine. <sighs> right, right off of Maine and uh, La Vida. After a Mary Jane Girls concert. And these fools were from, uh, I won't say where they're from, but they're from Santana. And uh, <laughs> dog, we beat the shit out of these fools. Like, I threw that fool by the slurping machine, stomped on him and shit. And and it was crazy because, <laughs> like, back at this time, Lee, like, gangster movies was in. Boys in the Hood, fucking Colors, American Me, Boulevard Nights, Bound by Honor, Blood In, Blood Out. I was, like, I wanted, I was, like, trying to reenact the scene I seen in there. <laughs> Are you allowed to go into 7-Elevens anymore? Yeah, but them? there was no cameras back then. Oh, okay. This is before that. Thank goodness. We threw one of those motherfuckers through the window, Lee. Oh, my God. What window? The front window. Oh, Jesus. We were some like, we were some crazy fools. Cause I was from like a hood that was like, we were all the guys that got cut from the varsity team just cause we didn't give a fuck. But we still had game. We were still with it. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have game. Uh, it was just, it was in a different area. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean, Joey? Doug. I mean, you don't have to fucking break it down for me. <laughs> <laughs> I sit here some nights and I just fucking wake up in the middle of the night and I think of something. Dog, this shit tripped me right now. Like, I didn't know you kidnapped the motherfucking fool that was on bail. <laughs> that's crazy. He was out on bail. Damn, the other that's guy, a movie, dog. And the other guy was a biker, fake biker. Yeah, that's a movie. And, and he kidnapped him because he he was dating. A stripper that was divorced trying to get divorced so he moved the stripper into his mother's house he moved out of the bedroom moved her into the bedroom and he slept on the couch the mother slept in the other master bedroom and i would go tidbo are you fucking her and he'd go no no she's a catholic girl meanwhile she was a titty dancer she danced nude you know she was making thousands a night but she, but she was go. catholic she was fronting so she told him i'll fuck you you're my man but you have to pay for my divorce Oh, you know how strippers work. Come on, they with it. That with like it. I thought about the deal real quick too. <laughs> she was beautiful. Yeah, she was a Spanish girl that was beautiful. He was big, white, and dumb and stupid. He fell for the hook, and that all. That's why he kidnapped this guy. But he didn't even do it for him. He did it because he needed that money to pay for her divorce so she could be with him. Yeah, because she yes. was Catholic. 
That's a hey, you don't understand what what Joey just said right now. I hear this every day, fucking this daily. Is a scam on a half. These bitches come up to me <clears throat> and give it to, me. and it's crazy, Lee, because the only motherfuckers that can scam strippers are hardcore gang members. This stripper was like, "Hey man, my fool that I was with, he got locked up." She's like, "I already sent him a thousand dollars, George. I sent him two packages. I even sent packages to his homies that are in there." And I was like, "You're getting fucking played, homegirl." I've been that dude. But she's like, but he fucks good, eh? I was just like, fuck. Every day. Like, this girl's like, yeah, man, I'm going to bone that fool for three months. And he said he's going to buy me tits and an ass. And what they do is that in TJ, the doctors in TJ, Joey, have stepped their fucking game up. Like, they came to San Diego and they got their degrees and said, you know what? I'm still a fucking citizen of TJ. I'm starting my shit over here. They do what? San Diego does and TJ they do it for half. And Cash. Yeah, exactly. And you got to put the deposit in. She's like, you put cuz she got her tits. She she's taking the fat off her stomach and putting it in her ass so it's like a better look. And then she's getting her tits all fixed up and shit and I think it's only costing her 4 or 5,000. dollars That's all? That's all. So the guy smooth. He gave her 1200. He's like, I'll give you. He's he's gonna give her twelve hundred in increments of those three months. That he's and he's like, I'm gonna fuck when I want to fuck, and that's it. But the girl's like, okay, yeah, yeah, that deal's in play. But you still gotta be my customer. You still gotta come in this bitch, tip me, give me my money because I still have to work. I can't just fuck you when you want. You know what I'm saying? So this fool comes into work, pays the fucker at work. Like, we watch on the camera as this bitch is getting fucked. Did you give him a discount or nothing? No, because they have to. The club always gets to. We have to know what you're making. Like, like say a half hour costs 300 bucks, Lee. That's what it costs? Yeah. And you. <laughs> We're taking you, dog. So, a half oh, hour. No. Three, so, oh dude, 300 bucks to fuck? Oh, the fuck? Okay. I thought that was just. Just you can eat their lap ass. dance, you can eat everything, you can eat their ass. anything, everything. but that's still a lot. Jesus Christ! Yeah, they'll piss on you, Lee. Anything. I don't want them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we gotta get Lee. How much? Do, how much do you have to give them to not piss on me? <laughs> no, we'll just get you you a whole more. package where they fuck you, suck you, and they pee on you. On we'll give out. you a brownie. I don't want to know what that. So, is. so Lee, like the club has to get that three hundred, and they take a fifty out, and they give you two hundred and fifty back. Because you're paying for that space you're using. When you when you fuck at a strip club, you're paying to be like, all right, this is going to be done quick. There's no hotel. There's nothing. It's just me going in somewhere. I'm fucking and I'm out. Okay. Do you get the full 30 minutes or is it just like as well, soon as this is over, we're done? It matters how much. that. That's when the negotiation the girl goes, well, look, I'll fuck you for 10 minutes in there. But if you pay me more, these fools don't get a cut of what I'm making now. That You don't even have to tip none of that. So, like, I heard, I've been to clubs, I ain't gonna lie, like, I don't fuck, but I go to see the competition, like, to see what they're doing. I always go to industry, and I'm like, wow. Research? Yeah, hey, these bitches are only charging four fifty to fuck for half an hour, and I'm talking 23-year-old to 28-year-old only, and they're beautiful, and it's like, it's the fucking OG pimping brothel house to the finest, because, you know, Cholo's run it. It's all sharp and shit. They got candles. Everything's clean. It's sharp drapes, curtains. <laughs> How do you know that? Is it like the sham? <laughs> Think about it. You walk in somewhere and they got like old theater curtains and that shit. People are fucking. Those are sound barrier curtains. Jesus. <laughs> I'm fucking 55 years old. I know. Dog. I would love to. Take my dick out of like an apartment <laughs> building and shit. But at what? the other hand, right? It is so fucking disgusting. It is. It really fucking is disgusting. As as much <laughs> as you want to sweeten it up. Listen, everybody should try it one time. Try, wait, wait, try, try go, what? Go to a strip club and oh, try, I negotiate with a chick and fuck her right there. In the oh, boot yeah. And let her suck your dick in the boot. You got to do it at least one time in your life. Yeah. Like $300? Man, who gives a fuck, Lee? Yeah. That's what it's. 300 bucks is for her to never talk to you, again, say anything, You just nothing. give her the 300 to swallow your jizz to and do to whatever talk you want. You, again. you can live your life. You, you get a rash. It's yeah. on you. You took a chance. Columbus did. Who cares? 
That's it. They'll take an uppercut for 50 more bucks. it's how you feel after that. (laughs) It's how you feel when you get home and you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. I just paid a chick to suck my balls. (laughs) And she did it for 10 minutes. She gypped me, but I came quick. (laughs) Because every time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you're come, you're done, You're done. You're done. Because your pants are all wet now. It could be a half hour. And you're done in two minutes? Yeah, Yeah. you're done in a minute. So what happens? Like, are you really saying we have to tip after that? Yo, yeah, if you dog. work the negotiation. See, but you know what the best part of it, dog? What's is that? is that for all you customers out there, this is how you win, guys. You could be like, look, this is not a whorehouse. You guys told me the VIP is 300 bucks, there's 300 bucks. Shh. Well, if I pay more, now I'm paying for prostitution. If I and that's what this one fool did to us, so we're like, damn, all right, dog. Sorry, homegirl. <laughs> like if I if you are, a, say you're the bouncer and you go get that money, you are now the pimp because you're negotiating this deal. That's where they get you. The club can only be like, hey, that it says 300 on the board. Sorry, you uh, know, like. But then if the bouncer gets the money, that's where you, you get the extra tip. It's pretty crazy, though, because like some girls, a lot of girls, they'll con you. They'll be like, they'll be like, hey, yeah, we'll have sex and they'll take you back there. And, and they'll be like, oh, you don't have a condom? You're like, what the fuck, bitch? Like, I thought it came with a deal. And they'll, they'll come back and be like, hey, she charged me 500 and she didn't give me no sex. And I was like, if you didn't fuck homegirl, you got to get that money back. Because these are paying customers. We want them mm. to come back too, you know? Like, it's weird, Joey. Like, the girls will try to get them and that customer will get that 200 back and be like, you fucked up, bitch. Now I'm going to go get your friend and spend 1000 on her. Because these fools are in there to show off. It's weird. Some weird shit. They serve food at your place? Hell no, they serve pussy. You you can't serve food and pussy in the same place. Really? Hell no, I don't, that's like a health code. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure the health department really No, no there's been like that when you first go to Cleveland Improv, the first time you work in Cleveland <laughs> as a feature act. Uh-huh. When you walk in the door, you walk back there, they give you the keys to the condo, and then on the way out, the door guy that answers the phone goes, Hey man, here. And he'll give you ten passes for free lunch. And there was a strip club a hundred yards from the condo under the fucking bridge by the water and you would go in there at lunchtime and they had prime rib <laughs> so you went in there you got lap dance for the small 20 <laughs> you, you, you got a heart on you felt the titties on the yeah. slide and you ate some fucking horrible prime rib it was just uh. disgusting this place <laughs> and however the meat looked on Monday it looked the same on Tuesday they just mm. put it like in a cloud and <laughs> took it out and chopped it up it was hard as fuck when I went the first day, there was a chef. By Friday, they just had a stripper cutting the yeah. meat and shit with no hat on and shit. Yeah. It was fucking crazy. Just put it like in so a yeah, steel. No, I've been to strip clubs where they had food in there. No, but naked, full naked? Don't. I don't think they do full naked. They do topless. Because there's a there's one and uh, there's one called the Library, Joey. <laughs> Ooh wee! Hey, this club is so good. It used to be owned by Hustler. And they bought them out. They got this method. These motherfuckers serve sushi in the strip club. On top of naked women, that place? No, like they do it. They got a sushi chef back there. Like this is a business spot. There's like 50 girls there on a Tuesday and they got like $3 anything night. It's more couples there than anything. Fools of money just trying to get bitches horny. It cracks. It's classy. But it's at a whorehouse. <laughs> if you got the right, right in there, it's like you're paying seven hundred up. Because oh yeah, for what? For half an hour? Yeah, right upstairs. Yeah, you got a sucky sucky room up there. <laughs> they got a sucky sucky fucky duck. Everyone does. Everyone does. The the price is always. Hey man, those are the play. You give the bouncer a hundred bucks. He'd be like, hey, dog, you want me to park your car? Too? <laughs> like you know what I mean? It's motherfuckers are trying to get their money on. Wait, what if you give the bouncer like 20 bucks? Would he give you an extra 10 minutes or something? <laughs> I went a few weeks ago to a strip club <laughs> for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and I get the creepy jeebies, dog. <laughs> I really do, man. I really want to be that guy. People, mm. people don't go to strip clubs in the valley at all. 
<laughs> like up in the valley, it's like fucking two Russian dudes <laughs> and a creepy Mexican dude that's horned up and a mm-hmm. fucking kid in the ass. Don't fuck anybody. Oh my god. He just goes and then they search you at the strip club. It's like Jesus Christ. Yeah. Man, I don't want to be nowhere where I get fucking searched. All right. <laughs> you know I'm over all that shit, guys. I feel you. Now this, I went to one this last Thursday was Side Dick Eddie's birthday, and we went to the House of Eden. And this one's different, man, because this one's more of a dominant black girl club. It's like, it's known to have hot-ass black chicks and everything else, but the black chicks there, like, they run that shit. It's, and uh, we went hard, dog. It, it's weird, though, because... Uh, I don't know how to say this. This one chick was like, hey, man, like, after, like, she would try to tell me she trains and shit. She's like, hey, uh, I try to be a Marine. And I was like, what the fuck? You know how strippers try to spill game? And then she's like, hey, look, the lap dances here only cost 20 bucks. No, 10 bucks. She's like, if you get three of them, I'll let you punch me in the stomach 40% afterwards. What? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not lying. My son was there. (laughs) I'm not. My son tripped out on me. I was like, you swear to God, I could punch you at 40%. She was like, yeah. And I was like, all right. That is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Where's Tony Wait. better than? Oh my thank God! <laughs> hey, I'll take you, dog. You can meet her. No, I don't want to meet nobody. Where's so, Tony better? Put, I the punched- Chris, put the Christianity back in the room and shit. <laughs> Punching women in the stomach. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'm in rehab with Harvey Weinstein because of your actions. Let me get some shout outs here real quick. My main man, Adam Milan, who sent us some fucking flutes made out of wood. They're beautiful. When I go to the jungle, Larry Ziegler, Kevin Arnold, Mister Yeah, Sparky. Mega Rees, Anthony Ifelis, Freddie Dadal, Sherry Robeck, Dante Gazzini, John J. Ramirez. Don't forget, Thursday night, Tempe, coming in big, 1,000 milligram brownies and shit, right off the fucking airplane like a, like a fucking airborne ranger, you understand me? <laughs> and then the third week of May, I'm in fucking the Stress Factory, Jersey. I'm coming home, two days. Don't fuck around. All right, so let me ask you something. When did you shoot Taco Shop? I think we shot it in 2010. No, 2011. Can you believe it takes fucking six years to yeah. get a movie off the ground, like, after you shoot it? Yeah, like, hey, I was pissed. Like, I remember talking shit. I remember. I, we all get pissed. Yeah. We all get pissed. Because they kept telling us, hey, it's going to make it. And I was like, come on, dog. It's been five years. <laughs> I was like, you guys going to change the name to Taco Flop? Like, what the fuck, dog? Like. And uh, finally, Oscar Torino, the guy who wrote the movie, he was like, look, we're having a fucking, we're having a viewing. They got a fancy hotel in L.A. And they had Corrupt and Daz from the Dog Pound there. Like, we got new investors. They had Ron Artest from the Lakers there. So these new investors took over and it was like, okay, now it's moving. You know? And uh, it got picked up. It's going to be in select theaters. It's going to be on video on demand and, and in Target. So we'll see what's up with it. It's funny how sometimes you shoot a movie. Like I heard Rambo. There was a problem when they shot Rambo. <laughs> Seriously, the first one. <coughs> For real? Yeah, there was a problem. Like They shot it and then they released it and then they re-released it because it didn't have any heat. Oh. They re-released it after Rocky. Ah, uh, that it was a wrap. It, like it's, it's, it yes, was, exactly how you said it, man. That's, it's really weird how films work, how I did this movie years ago that changed my life, but I'm still a little pissed off at the dudes because while we were shooting, we were going to be on Broadway, we were going to do this, we were going to do that, and then the movie came out and he called everybody like, dog, do you know anybody on YouTube? Do you know anybody? And you're like, what the wow. fuck? Wow. We worked for three weeks straight on this movie, no days off, three weeks fucking straight on this movie, right through Thanksgiving. I'm not mad about the work. I had a good time making it. I had a, but it's the shit that goes afterward. For a while there, bro, after the longest yard, I was doing fucking, I did like three years of death. <laughs> I did movies that were fucking god awful. I didn't fucking Straight to know. Walmart? Bro, straight to fucking Walmart. I didn't fucking know. You yeah. didn't know when you're but shooting. Hey, yeah, you're they learning. pay you and you take the money and then they call you up one day and tell you they're having a premiere on Sunset Boulevard at five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. You're like, what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> I got shit to do. I'm not driving to Sunset Friday at a fucking 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, I did a bunch of those for a while. 
Yeah. You know, you when you hear you, you don't know what you're shooting. You don't know what you're fucking shooting. I, I knew what I was shooting when I was shooting Spider Man too. I knew what I was yeah. shooting. I was shooting the longest yard and grudge match and shit. But there's movies that you're shooting. You're like, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen here. Yeah, I got two of those under you my belt. Pray, you pray for the best. You go, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen here. <laughs> One of them, I'm glad I didn't fucking make it. These motherfuckers flew me out to Kansas. It was Hutchinson, Joey, Cholo, like me. It was. I was in shock. I thought they were gonna kill me, cause like these were like crazy white boys. Like, hey, th these were 35-year-old men that had on SpongeBob T-shirts at the fucking bar, dog. <laughs> you know the SpongeBob? They yeah. had those T-shirts and shit. And, uh, yeah, Kansas. Uh -huh. Hey, what were we saying right now? Sorry, I fucking jumped Don't worry out. about it. The edible jumped out. You relax. Don't worry about nothing. We got this. Oh, yeah, I was talking about the part. So... They had me play a fucking rapist. Like, there, I guess there's a story in Kansas where there's this, um, there was this rich ass guy that restored anything antique, and he hired these two, a cholo and a white boy that just got out of prison because they took wood shop and all that shit in prison, and they could repair anything. And I guess me, my character, and the white boy, we would rape the people that came back in when they paid. And it was weird because it was. The director's w w girlfriend was the lead chick, and he was like, "Hey, homie, you're not even raping her, dog." <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck?" He's like, "I want you to grab her and throw her," and I was like, "I can't be doing that shit, dog." <laughs> I was on parole. I needed the money. That's the only reason I did it. And uh, well, that's what we do most of the dumb shit we do in the beginning <laughs> is for fucking money. You know. I'm glad that motherfucker never made it. Oh my god! If I tell you how many bad things I did for money <laughs> in December, especially because in December you crumble. Yeah. You know oh yeah. They, they should, those type of deals show up in December. In December is do what you don't want to do month. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, like some people, bro. When you got hit in the face with a pot. No way. But it was fifteen hundred <laughs> for two hours, cash in an envelope. Nobody knew nothing. How many pies? Like four. <laughs> and I still see the guy every six months. Man, we're gonna release it soon. <laughs> yeah, I got a dog. It was and this. The guy who wrote the movie was supposed to be a writer on Seinfeld. This is when Seinfeld first fucking ended. They called me in for this fucking secretive project and. Meet, meet Andy, whatever. He's a writer on Seinfeld. And the guy was smoking a cigarette like he was fucking Tchaikovsky or Britowski, whatever that guy's <laughs> name is. And they auditioned me. And then later on, they called back. And they're like, well, we want you to get hit in the face with a pie. Uh, I got either a pizza pie. I forget what the fuck pie it was. Was it warm? And I was like, you don't break my nose. No, be sensitive <laughs> shit. But when I got there, they made me wear like a diaper. Oh, my God. Why? They threw, because they threw by the way in there like they usually do. They forgot to tell me that you're going to wear a diaper until I got there. Something weird, bro. <laughs> this was weird shit. Up in Studio City at 8 in the morning. Oh, I shot from shit. 8 to 10, dog. And they gave me one of those envelopes, one of those fucking cash envelopes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I got another call one time from a friend of mine that I know well. And he goes, you want to make a thousand bucks this afternoon? <laughs> I'm like, absolutely. He goes, come to this address. Sounds point. like you did porn, Joey. Did you do no, porn? No, no. Down there, they put like it was a, a video game or some type of game oh. where they, I let this fat chick put flowers all over me. Or something yeah. like that. Wow. You know, yeah, a thousand bucks. Right? And you get a check like that the next day. You get the overnight check to the fucking yeah. house. You're crazy, bro. And they ripped me off. <laughs> you know they rip you off. If yeah. they give you a thousand, it's because they're getting ten thousand. Yeah. They rip you off straight up. But you need the cash. Yeah, but you need the cash. What yeah. about the one year, bro? I was dying on a vine. I got the call on a Sunday afternoon. If a fucking two thousand bucks, first they offered me a nickel, and I go, where is it? And they were like, it's in Bowen. I go, no, I'm not driving out there for a nickel for that shit. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to tell you what it is. <laughs> so, so they called back and I said, listen, give me a fucking small two thousand. Because I'm the real deal. I've been in movies and shit like yeah. that. And she goes, okay, $2,000. And I drove to Orange County and I had a walk in with a suit and make believe I was big pussy. <laughs> that's how much I loved cocaine then. Like, it was like yeah. 2000 cash. Uh, that's that a night. good week. Bro, I did a bunch of shit. I remember one year, George specifically, oh my God, I had just hooked up with Terry. I hooked up with Terry that July. And about that November, 
we move in together. And I'm living with Terry. And you know me, dog. I don't give a fuck if you're broke 11 months a year. Christmas time, you always want to be straight. When I was broke, when I was flat broke on the streets doing comedy in the beginning, all I wished for was one thing, to have a decent Christmas. Can we at least have a decent holiday season? 11 days. Give me 11 days of the year, God. I'll fight like a fucking savage the rest of the year, but make sure that I'm covered because there was a lot of Christmases that, bro, 84, 83, (laughs) 85, they They were brutal. They still hurt. There was one Christmas that destroyed me, 84. I acted like an asshole. I ate in a hotel room by myself. Damn. You know, that type of shit. So, but that's all I ever asked for was those 11 days of the year to be straight. Give me a little Coke. You know what I'm saying? A little Coke on the 26th yep. to get the party started until right. New Year's. And then New Year's Day, you lie to yourself and you start all over again. <laughs> One uh. fucking year, bro, I'm dead broke. I'm doing stand-up, I'm being by my mom, but I'm snorting up a fucking storm. It's 2000, 2001. Wow. I'm out there four nights a week snorting, seven nights a week doing comedy, writing. How old are you? At this time? Oh, Jesus Christ. 38, 39. Damn. 38, Savage. 39. Just going out there four or five. I know. I seen your old headshot. It was old headshot yeah, day. Yeah. You look like you would fuck some shit up, dog. That was when I was 34. Yeah. Bro, that headshot. This is how that headshot went down. Yeah. I became a regular at the store on a Sunday. And that Monday, I went to the store and Eddie Griffin bumped me. So they told me to come back on Tuesday. And in the old days, Jeff didn't work on Tuesdays. That piano guy? Yeah. So a Spanish guy worked there. that had like a half a fag mustache, like rolled <laughs> up and shit. But he would always come up. He always wore like hats. He was colorful. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he was in the closet or if he wasn't. But you want me to tell you something, bro? He was a good-ass Chicano. That's what's we up. were talking one day, and he goes, what's on your mind? We were, you know, like, he's a piano player. You know, they yeah. walk out of the store, and they go on the bottom. This is my second day in L.A. Lee, remember? What was the lesson two weeks ago? If you commit, the universe takes care of you. Well, yes. I'm here. I become a regular. That Monday, <clears throat> before the comedy store, I got a call from my so-called manager that an agent wanted to sign me. If I had a headshot, I'm like, what the fuck is a headshot? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, they need a headshot immediately for you to go out on theatrical auditions. They're great agents. That night at the comedy store, I was telling this guy that, and he goes, all right, do me a favor. You, you, where do you live? I go, Hollywood. He goes, perfect. I live in Hollywood. I still remember where the place was. It was down the It was down the block from this disgusting restaurant that's still there. It used to be, you ever see the movie American Pimp? No. American Pimp was a, a Hughes Brothers film or something. I don't, I don't, don't quote I me might on have, this. I might have. There used to be a, a famous hamburger stand on Sunset where there used to be hookers. and But that place, down the block from that, what the fuck were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the, the, uh, it was 2001 and there was like a hooker out there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, George, you forget. <laughs> no, it was your second day in LA. Yeah, your and, second and day. I met him over there oh, for, for headshots. The headshots. And dog, that dude goes come by my house at eleven, ten, and he took headshots. They developed them that night, and I went over to the corner of La Brea and I made ten copies. And I was that broke. How much was that? Like five bucks? In those days, it was like three dollars a copy. Damn. And I remember that dude. I said, "What can I do for you?" And he goes, "Just be my friend." <laughs> and he did my headshots, those headshots. There. Wow. In those days, agents would say, you know, we're rejecting those. You have to have either these three head people take your photograph. And oh. then we each 400 apiece. And I was like, fuck you. A headshot's a headshot, bitch. Yeah. Even then, I knew you're not sucking me into those photographers. <laughs> fuck you. It was like a union, huh? Like it was, yeah, it was really clickish and shit. No, you have to have headshots from one of these five people. And they would give you a sheet of paper. <laughs> And that's what you had to do your headshots with. If not, they wouldn't take you. But these two sisters took me and they got me auditioned and me, you know, whatever, they got me started. But the point of the story is that this dude just approached me. He didn't want to suck my dick. He wanted nothing from me, bro. <laughs> he was just straight up gangster Spanish dude. He goes, I'll take your picture tomorrow in my backyard. That's what's up. He did it for like, and it was an hour out of his time and he made my fucking day. And I never forgot him. That headshot that Joe Rogan posted, uh-huh. that's that headshot. Wow. That's my first. There's only. Ten copies of that headshot. 
So it's like limited it's, edition. Yeah, if you see that headshot, steal it because nobody's got that <laughs> headshot. They're gonna they're gonna have that headshot after upon. that. I got headshots with a different photographer, uh-huh. but I had that. I, I still had like five of those or six of those because in those days you had to take your resume and staple it behind the headshot. Okay, so you had to make copies of your resume and then cut it to the size of the exact size of the headshot. It couldn't leak over the sides. It had to be perfect. So you had to do that, staple the corners, and then you had to bring it to your agents every two or three weeks to refuel. You know, it was crazy. It was a complete different world, but I was on top of that shit. My agents never called me and said, we need headshots. That's the worst thing that could happen to you in those days is your agent will call and say, you need a headshot. Now you don't even fucking need a headshot. Damn. All those headshot places are out of fucking business. Straight up. Gone. No, but it's a, it's a different world. And it's good that this movie came out. You get a little light shed on your taco shop. You're going to have a yeah. little premiere tomorrow night. The comedy store yeah. going to do the show. Mm-hmm. If I get out of guest book, I'm sorry. I'm shooting tomorrow and don't Tuesday. Don't worry, so. brother. Yeah, we're going to show the movie first. So, you know, comedy probably won't even start. What time does it start? It's going to start at 8.30. Uh, we're going to show the movie. The movie's an hour and five minutes. And then after that, we're going to do like 45-hour comedy. Okay. And then, you know, it's Monday. The comedy store is the best. They got Kill Tony. You know what I mean? They got Kill Tony and they got Potluck as well. It's going to be a packed night tomorrow. Good for you, George. Yeah, George, you're always you. hustling, bro. Trying. Fresh you know? out of jail. No, but see, George, you let hold you what you let hold you. How many people you meet, bro, within the first two minutes are telling you they were in prison? You ever meet those guys? First off, they tell you, know, you don't even need for them to tell you. Yeah. They wear it like a badge on it. Yeah. In my world, it was a bump in the road, and you get back on the road. <coughs> Straight up. That's all that is. If you're really that person who they say they are, it's going to be a bumpy fucking road. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's going to yeah. be a bumpy road. But if you're not that person they say they are, you can prove them wrong. Straight up. And guys like you and me did. We mm-hmm. proved a few people wrong. That's it. I take pride in that before anything. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, they're never going to make it. They're felons, whatever. It doesn't matter what label nah, they put we on push you. It. If you wear it as a badge of honor, you're fucking dead. If you just go, that was something that happened 30 years ago, mm-hmm. fuck you, you know? Yeah. Fuck you. Don't, yeah. I paid my debt yeah. to society. I paid my taxes. I did everything. I paid my back taxes. I did everything, bro. Nah, it's you're, over. You're right. Hey, you remember that quarterback from the Chargers, Ryan Leaf? He was like yeah. the biggest flop. Man, yesterday <clears throat> I stayed up for a little bit. It was like 4 in the morning, and I... Did you know he got locked up? He did three years? Yeah. He got locked up a couple times, didn't he? Yeah, but like now he's like a fucking big time rehab counselor now. And it's crazy. Like, fuck. All off Oxycontin. It was just fucking crazy. Look, we live in a weird zone in life. I felt like. Yeah. Listen, you're at the comedy store. You're at the comedy store. That's the Yankee Stadium. Yeah, straight up. Okay. That's Yankee fucking stadium. That, 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 that's uh, the old Boston. What's the name of the Fenway. Garden? That's Fenway. You're nah. in the major leagues. That's Dodger Stadium. That's Chavez Ravine. That's, that's everything. You're in the major leagues. And, you know, we started the podcast off of Roseanne. We weren't, <coughs> when we're talking about Roseanne, Roseanne got so powerful. By the time I got here, you know, I had heard thousands of stories. She was just like vicious, huh? Bro, they said she'd never work again. She pissed everybody off? That much. But all those people are gone. And guess what? She's still around. She became relevant on social media. You know? Oh, I yeah. Know, I don't know how many followers she's got. She gained all kinds of motherfuckers. All kinds of people. And she, she got all of Fox News emails. And she gained, She went right in the slick way. She went right into the back door. The fact that they're paying her again 20 <laughs> years later, bro. You got to take your hat off to her. Whatever the oh, fuck yeah. she says on Twitter or whatever. Who gives a fuck? You ever think that these people may be ruffling your feathers? What does she have to lose if this show fails? Nothing. It's not. She goes back to her island in Hawaii and she still has <laughs> $200 million mm-hmm. left and 50,000 farms that grow mangoes or something, coconut <laughs> fucking something. You know, the people have to realize that shit that sometimes people are just getting you riled up for no fucking reason. And at the end of the day, it ain't shit. At the end of the day, you know what? They're just trying to get numbers on a fucking TV yeah. screen. And you buy into it. Whether it's Roseanne or Conor McGregor or whoever the fuck. Fucking Kanye West. Kanye West. Whatever <laughs> move they make, 
This is five white dudes in a room going, what's our next move? What's the strategic move? You know what yeah. I'm saying? This is what they expect from you. They're throwing a jab at you. What do you expect from George? Is George going to counter it with a kick to the body? Or is George going to counter it by taking me down? You know, these are the options you weigh. So, who the fuck knows? Me, I mind my business. You, you mind your business. You do your spots, you go home, you see your kids, and you try to enjoy the second chance life gave you. And yeah. that's it. This, this is this is fucking easy. I want to be in fucking. I don't. I don't, bro. I don't give a fuck. I'd rather come here two nights a week, fuck around with Lee, smoke some dope, talk shit with a friend, and go home than be on a fucking studio all day. Oh fuck around. that. Yeah. No, no, no. You learn what you want to do. You learn how you want to do it, especially out here. This could go fast or this could go easy. Me and you have been around for a long fucking time. You've been around a long ass time. Fuck yeah, bro. 20 years. Watching. <laughs> Watching. One of the most interesting lines in, in any movie is Apocalypse Now when he takes the acid trip. And he starts thinking to himself and he's like, you know what? Charlie's in the bush getting stronger and I'm in here getting weaker by the minute. We've been in the bush. You know, in the bush, watching, watching everybody else fucking get famous. Get, you know, we were here. I saw Gabriel hit. Yeah. Am I mad again? No, no, no. I'm not saying nothing like that. I'm just saying you see the way people hit. You see the people who stayed on top, who are still on the road. I saw the people that breathed through everybody, bro, and they were on the road for 18 months. And that's it. They bombed out. Their little TV show didn't pan out for them. Yeah. That's why. We were just talking about this at lunch today. I saw the little door kid from the comedy store in Diagostino at Marie E.T. And we were talking about how you see so many headliners that come and go. You see the people who do stand-up until they get a TV show. Then they drop out of stand-up. Then they try to come back six years later, dog. And they ain't the same size no. because you got off stage. You stop yeah. working that muscle. That's no bueno. No way. No matter if you're on TV or not, you got to get on stage four times a fucking week. And you'll figure it out. If you really love stand up, you'll figure it out. You'll figure out how to get out there one night a week or two nights a week. In fact, it helps you. It helps you with people watching. Now you're out. Yeah. Especially today. If you go to the comedy store, you're like a fucking rock star now mm -hmm. at the comedy store. A lot of actors go there not to Judd. Yeah. Avatar's always fucking there. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a different fucking place, a different fucking home. Well, George, I wish you a lot of luck with this movie. You know, Thank I you, always brother. got your back, dog. I'm happy you came on tonight. Me too. It was going to be a whole hum not. I go, fuck it. Let's get George Perez to promote his fucking thing. Thank like you. Like I said, if I get out of guest book tomorrow early, I will take a shower. It starts at 8. Yeah, it starts at 8.30. Comedy star main room tomorrow. Look at you, you bad motherfucker. Doing thing. spots at the world famous and shit. That's how we do it. Best like club. Gangster. Like I said, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Tempe, Arizona. Then the end of the month, Stress Factory, Providence is already sold out. You know I love you fucking savages. As usual, uh, we'll see you Wednesday. Lee Syatt, what's going on with you, Tarzan? I'm doing good, buddy. Yeah, I'm you here. look good. Tremendous. Thank what you. did your mother say? Tell me it's not other stuff. Uh, yeah, she was not happy. Anyway, who gives a Frenchman fuck? I love you, George Press. I love you too, brother. Good luck tomorrow night at the comedy store. I'll see you Savages Thursday in the Tempe Improv. Lee, kick that fucking mule. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's right. I almost forgot. How the fuck? That's how stoned I am. I almost forgot I to read the ads. You know what I'm saying? That's when you know. You stoned to the ghost. That brownie's yeah, fucking that, good. That brownie creeped up. I tell you, it was the horse with the yeah. red on it. He was all the way in the end for the whole race, and then he just blew right past us. Listen, you heard me talk about me on these, and you know that I'm a big believer in their product. The perfect balance and the comfortable fit. Every month now, they have new and exciting prints, and they arrive at your door in a little fun bag. I got a fun bag myself the other day. You never know what's in there. Listen, me on these lensing micro mold doll in their underwear. All right, it's a substantially sourced natural soft fibers that starts with beechwood trees and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. The results have been downright dreamy. MeUndies adventurous prints and designs are all limited edition, and new patterns are released every few weeks on a rolling basis. It's unbelievable. Every like three weeks, I got a new pair of fucking underwear, and they send a matching one for my fucking girlfriend. <laughs> she don't wear it, my wife, girlfriend. What the fuck am I talking about? Yeah. Yeah. That's how high I am. MeUndies has a 100% satisfaction guarantee, all right? MeUndies guarantees that you'll love their undies or your money back. Now, 
I'm telling you what I'm going to do. Mealy's has a great offer for the family here. For any first-time purchases, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure you're going to love their underwear. They offer you 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love the first pair, you get a full refund. It's that fucking easy, all right? It's a no-brainer. Get 20% off pair of the most comfortable undies you'll ever put on. They grip onto your nutsack. They make your ass feel tight. And there's no sweat sack when you go like those white underwear. No, no, no. It's over. 2018. Get your shit together. Now, to get your 20% off your first pair, this is what you got to do. And free shipping. And 100% guarantee. You got to do this, all right? Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. MeUndies.com slash Joey. Listen, get your pair of MeUndies. You're going to tweet me and say, Joey, I'm happy I get MeUndies now. You're a fucking savage. All right. Number two, listen to me. Listen to me straight. 66% 66% of men lose their hair by the age of 35, all right? It's the hairline silhouette starting to move backwards. Any bald spots yet? Yes. How will you feel a year from now when it's business as usual up there? Do you want a bald spot to pop up or do you want to do something about it first? Do you want your hairline to recede or do you want to do something about it first? Why do guys turn to weird solutions like Captain Boo doing all this stuff and when they can turn medicine, when they can turn to medicine and science? Listen, it's a one-stop, 4 is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. You hear me? One-stop shop. You ready? Hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness. Men, hear me out. Him connects you with the real doctor's medical-grade solution to treat hair loss. Well-known generic equivalents to name-brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. None of that. No, 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 no. Prescription solutions backed by science. No waiting rooms. No awkward doctor visits. Save hours by going to 4 It's that easy. Answer a few questions. A doctor review it, and they can prescribe you Products are shipped directly, you ready for this, to your door. Directly to your door. All right? Directly to your door. Me, I'm starting to lose my hair in the back. I'm 55 years old. Listen, I'm an ugly dude. It worked while I had it. Well, I needed it. Now, I don't need it right now. But if I needed this stuff, this is what I would go with. Lee, you should give it a shot. Columbus did. Because from what I read about it, this is tremendous. Four hymns. This is what I'll do, all right? The church family, again. If you order now, I'll get you a trial month of hymns for $5 today. Right now, while supplies last. Right now, $5 today for a month. A trial month while supplies last. See the website for full details. This will cost you $100 if you went to a doctor or pharmacy. Go to 4 slash Joey. You want to stop being bald? You want to prevent it before it goes crazy? That's 4 hymns. F O R H I M S dot com slash Joey. For hindsight, for hymns dot com slash Joey. Anyway, George Perez, good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Lee Sayan, I love you, dirty bastard. You're over there giggling. And you guys, I love you. I'll see you in Tempe Thursday night. Don't forget about me. Kick that mule, Lee.